Good morning. Welcome to Morning Joe with Christina and Brooke, live from an Orlando closet, so I can be away from my noisy family. <laughs> if you hear a little bit of an echo, that's what's going on over here. Um, so today we're going to talk about lies, 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 and the lies we tell ourselves. Like, hey, I can do this morning show from Orlando with 12 people in a hotel room. No problem. Hold on a second. <laughs> Fast forward to that moment and I'm like, okay, where can I hide where I don't hear babies crying and kids having a good time and life happening. So here we are. We're going to have Joe kick us off with the lies we tell ourselves. Was I mute the entire time? No, he's, you have to unmute him. Okay, he's unmuted There now. it is. There it is. <laughs> the lies we tell ourselves. Just mute yourself and we'll be fine. <laughs> all of these fancy host features, which clearly I'm not. So I am, I love, I'm equal parts like loving and also terrified when you throw it to me first. Because I never know whether I'm going to derail where we're supposed to be going or where it is that you guys want to go. Um I will tell you, I think this topic for me this week was crazy mind bending in terms of the places where my thoughts went and where I landed was, I think ultimately the lies that we tell ourselves has to do with and are closely connected to like our self-talk, right? The things that we tell ourselves, the narratives that we create about ourselves, about our reality, like the underlying beliefs about ourselves. That's, I think that's, that's kind of where my, my brain went with this. So one of the scary things that I found that my, like the lies that I tell myself, that my self-talk has the capacity to change a lot from moment to moment, from day to day. And sometimes the things that I'm telling myself are contradictory. Like I could wake up one day being like, I am the king of the world. I am going to rock it today. Only to be followed up. Like sometimes that later afternoon, like, man, I just suck at everything. I'm not very good at things, right? Like, so it's, it's contradictory. So one of the things that I was really trying to tap into during the week is like, okay, take, if we could somehow eliminate the ebbs and the flows, what are kind of the longer existing, enduring, underlying themes, underlying things that exist with the lies and with the narratives that I've created? And there's two. One of them I think is very normal. I've probably read this and I think people tend to bump into this uh, on their own at some point, but the lie that I don't have enough time, I don't have enough time for things, right? Uh, I totally do. I just don't manage the one, I don't manage the time that I have well. <laughs> I'm not as disciplined as I need to be. I um, don't make the best decisions sometimes with my time, but it's there because I have the same amount of time that Christina does and that Brooke does and that Elon Musk does like we all have the same 24 hours right so that's totally a lie that I tell myself and the other one this is the crazier one I, I couldn't even figure out how to phrase it so I it, my mind kept going to two different ways that I think I'm trying to explain the same thing but just from different angles so one of them is that my my natural attributes aren't enough to be successful or as successful as I want to be or on the flip side of that, that people who I view as being successful are somehow vastly better or more talented than I am, right? That's, that's, the, that's so kind of that two-pronged two approach. And my takeaway from that is I started diving into that during the week, right? So having this, these like existential crisis at two o'clock in the morning when I'm thinking about Morning Joe with Christina and Brooke was that, that that's not the case, right? That it's, as I started thinking about these people that I find to be successful and what the difference is that I kept landing on. They're just, they're a little bit more willing to work hard. They're a little bit more willing to take risks. These are people who uh, have higher expectations or have a higher desire to attain a level of success that sometimes I don't care about. Like I might offhand be like, oh, that'd be great to have. And so I was like, oh wait, I gotta do all of that to get that. I don't wanna do that. Are you kidding me? That's way too much. So. That's, that's where I went. That's where my mind was this last week, thinking about the lies that we tell ourselves. Well, Joe, that's so interesting that you say that because I can relate to everything that you just said. Um, you know, my boyfriend wakes up at 4.30 in the morning every day. And I just, I envy that, you know, because I don't do that. And between 4.30 and the time that I wake up, he has 
done two hours of sales training, read a book, answered emails, you know, done all these things that the rest of the world if it's not waking up at 4.30 in the morning, won't get to you. And um, you're right. You have to be really driven, motivated. And another thing is just checking in with your goals every hour to make sure you're focusing on it. Like Brian Tracy from Think Big was saying that like the difference between a successful person and a smart person is that you're just following your goals every hour. You don't have to be, I mean, there's all different types of intelligence, right? But you don't have to be the smartest person or good enough to be successful. Exactly what you said, you have to be a risk taker. You have to make sure that you're, you're motivated, you're spending that time. So I think that's huge. That really landed for me with what you're saying. And you know, and even something that I was thinking relating to your, your boyfriend is a lie that we could tell ourselves. Cause I fall into this trap a little bit is that somehow being successful means that I have to do it the way that your boyfriend is doing it at waking up at four o'clock in the morning. Like that's, that's great for him because he can wake up at four and his brain's wired that way. Or maybe he's into that routine. It's, it's the deeper thing of that. He's setting aside intentional and purposeful time to Correct. get those things done that he has deemed to be a priority. Correct. Right? Yeah. And I think a lie that we can tell ourselves is I got to be waking up at four and I have to be working out by five and I have to do, wait, wait, wait. I could do that at six o'clock at night too. The bigger idea is, am I doing it? Am I, am I carving yeah. out time to get it done in a way that works for me? And that might look very different than what that looks like for Christina. Exactly. Christina. <laughs> oh, no. I'm, oh, I guess you're all muted. I have the power now. I'm unmuting you. I may speak now. Thank you so much. Um, yeah, so true. You guys hit on all of the points that I would prepared to, to speak about today, but coming from a little bit of a different perspective, each of those values or goals or things that we set out to do comes with their own set of consequences. And what we have to do as we're checking in each hour as Brooke recommends or each day or whatever works for you to make sure in, in line with making those goals, you have to consider the consequences that ensue, right? So if you wanna be a successful CEO, then some of the consequences are that you have to manage a team. You can't do that on your own. And that could be a consequence in some people's mind. Like, I don't wanna manage people. That takes so much time and energy, but that's one of those consequences. Or I wanna be a stay-at-home mom. Wonderful. That's an amazing goal. That's not an easy goal, but that means that you have to be the caretaker for many children all throughout the day and all of their emotions and manage their needs and wants. Those are the consequences. And sometimes when we set goals, um, some of the lies we tell ourselves are that it's going to be wonderful. If only I could be a stay at home mom, life would be amazing. Hold on a second. Yeah, you're, you're trading a different set of consequences. And maybe we don't even want to use that term consequences, but you're trading realities. for, yeah, realities, like what that looks like. And it's a give and take and there's good and there's bad and it's trading up, right? Like, oh, well, I don't want to be a stay at home mom anymore. I want to be the CEO. Okay, well now your new normal or your new consequences or priorities or whatever it has you is you're managing a team, you're running operations, you're making decisions every minute of every day. So you have to figure out what the good things of your goals are, and then also be willing to put up with the things that you might not love so much. And, and that's ultimately how we reach our goals is planning for those things that we love and don't love at the same time and, and seeing it through. Yeah, and I, I like what you said about planning. There's so much that goes into like painting a picture of what your goal is, right? What does it include? What does it look like? But then also reflecting along the way too, right? So, so many of us can really get to the goal that we're trying to set, you're right. And then there's this consequence. It's like, oh wait, I, did, I thought I wanted to be the highest level in my company, but now, I am so far away from what I started and my purpose was. So ooh, do I really want to manage a company and not work directly with, you know, the client or whatever? 
Um, but yeah, reflecting along the way and making sure that this is what you want and this is what you've done and, you know, taking a look at it. You're muted again. <laughs> what is going on? Sorry, it's just the, the Broken Joe show. That might be the great, yeah, that's a, that's a really good title for us moving forward. I keep trying to, <laughs> I keep trying to unmute you. There you go. <laughs> I had something and now it's gone. <laughs> that's okay. No. Actually, no. Love, I, yeah, I love where you cool. took it and where Brooke kind of followed up because it's, it's like, it's where, it's where we can take like what the topic is today and okay, so what do you do with that, right? Like, what do you do with these lies that you tell yourself? Well, I think as you start identifying what those lies are, you're like, wait, I've been lying to myself about this. I, I can change this. It then brings into the conversation to our self-talk of, well, do I really want to change this? Am I prepared to make those trade-offs that I'm going to have to make in order to change this? Or am I just going to accept the reality? And I, maybe I really am just kind of happy where I am, right? Like I think of my mind goes to one of the examples that you use. Think of that, that super high powered CEO, right? That has uh, a million responsibilities, who is professionally as successful as you could possibly want to be. It's really unfair to, to paint to paint with really broad strokes and to generalize what we have to because that's you know it's hard to have a conversation otherwise. I've met some of those people and I don't know how many of their personal lives I would want for myself because of the sacrifices they have to make. That's where those trade offs come. They going back, they still only have the same 24 hours that I do. Yeah. So those four or five hours that I'm choosing to dedicate to protect to spend with my wife or with my daughter or just hanging out or sleeping or napping or socializing. Sometimes those things are mutually exclusive with being super high power, you know, responsible person who's running a multi gazillion dollar industry or company that you have to make those trade offs. And it's something to consider right when unveiling these lies that we tell ourselves and like, wait, so what am I going to do with this? What is that going to mean for me practically? And am I okay with that? Yeah, Joe. And, um, you know, I know the three of us can go on and on and on forever, but something that sparked for me was Michael Jordan, you know, the last dance. People see this famous basketball superstar, you know, and now that everything is exposed on TV about what he's done, he dedicated his life to be, who he is and what he is. I mean, he got cut from his high school basketball team. So he didn't have that natural ability right away, but he worked harder than everyone else. And that was what he wanted. He didn't go party after practices. He would practice another two hours. You know, he, he was very straight and narrow. So, you know, it's a good conversation for kids too, because kids can do anything that they want to do. But do they know the work that goes into it? If they want to be a famous basketball player or, you know, um, a college football player, I had a conversation with another parent the other day. Well, you got to work every single day for that, you know, to get to that. So it's not just getting there. It's the process. How empowering and inspiring too, to think you really can do or be whatever you want. You just have to find out those secret sauce steps and do them more than anybody else over and over and over again exactly 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 and i hope i'm not bringing down like rain clouds or gray <laughs> skies with what i'm going to say because i think we're all saying the same thing just in different ways i just keep for some reason focusing on and just in real time as we're talking about it you know i keep focusing on kind of the the trade-offs and i love christina that you brought this up right like the limiting factors the parameters and Think about the thing that I know, you know, being a guidance counselor and a college and career advisor and working with students as they engage with these big picture questions, sometimes for the first time in their life, one of the phrases, I know I stole it from somewhere, certainly wasn't from my brain, right? The idea that you can do anything, especially when you're talking to some 17 year old kid, like you can do anything. The world is yours, but you can't do everything. Mm. Like doing one thing comes at the cost of doing something else, opportunity costs. So you can do anything. You can literally fill in the blank with whatever you want to do, but it just can't be everything because again, we only have the limited amount of time. We have limited resources. We can't, we can't give equal attention to everything. We'll, 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 we'll run out of energy in, in an hour or two. 
Um, yeah, I don't. Did that? To your point, I think that also goes back to no, no, no. It goes back to the balance wheel too. Are you guys muted again? No. No, 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 no. Just <laughs> make fun of Joe while you talk. <laughs> <laughs> it's like oh no. Um, yeah, checking in with your what you want to focus on, what areas of your life are important to you. So if you are focused 100% on work, what are you giving up when you spend the whole waking day focusing on your job? Wow. So checking in with yourself, taking that time, whether it be in the morning, in the afternoon or at night, figuring out what can you reflect on what can you work on personally what can you work on with your family what can you do for fun how much time do you want to devote to everything because you're right some, some okay thank you speaking of thank you oh, she's about to say, speaking of time <laughs> oh right? so you, fun. high flash ladies are the ones like hey i gotta be out of here 9 15 we're doing things movers shakers i'm like but i'm just home we can't go for 30 minutes today <laughs> 9 15 you guys gotta go Oh, you're so good. What a great topic and such a fun conversation. I could do this with you guys all day long. Um, let's do this though. As we think of specific stories throughout the, throughout the week, I know I can think of one in my head right now, just the story of becoming a head of school and all the things I've given up to be here. What are my sacrifices? What does that look like? And maybe we can start a trend and empower others. Like, Maybe there are other potential aspiring heads of school out there and they want to know like, what does this life really look like? Is it for me? So I would love to share that story. I will create a video this week and post it on Morning Joe with Christina and Brooke. And I welcome others to do the same. I love that. Awesome idea. Super fun. Thanks, Christina. Thank you, you guys. So fun. Bye everyone. Happy Sunday. Enjoy your Sunday. Yeah.